Hello, I'm Julian Northbrook from doingenglish.com. Continuing on from the last video, perhaps, or a previous video, possibly a future video because I never end up publishing these in order, but let's talk a little bit about the concept of correctness when it comes to speaking English as a second language. Okay, so this is actually a conversation that came up um, in the feedback that I just this morning did for one of my current MEFA members. Uh, and this particular member was talking a lot about you know, needing to be correct, and this is very, very common. And a lot of people really worry about whether what they're saying is correct English or not. But actually, the idea of what is and is not correct is it's a very, very difficult concept to pin down. One of the very influential, quite early, but very influential books in applied linguistics that really changed our way that we think about the learning and teaching of languages was Michael Lewis's The Lexical Approach. And if I remember right, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, it was uh, published in, in 1993, I think. But again, it was a very, very influential book. And one of the things that Michael Lewis talked about a lot was the fact that actually nothing is ever really correct or incorrect. Although, you know, the way that English gets taught at school and traditionally gets taught, you know, it tends to be very, very black and white. Something is grammatical or it's not grammatical, i.e. it's either correct or it's incorrect. But how often is this actually the case? And really, it's kind of not. So, for example, I mean, if I said something like, uh, black cat, it is a, we would argue that that is incorrect because the, the sentence order is all screwed up. But what if I'm doing a Yoda impression? Well, suddenly now it's actually the correct thing to say, and it's actually the best and most natural way to say it in that context. That's a very, very extreme example, but it's an illustrative one because what it tells you is that in the right context, anything can actually be correct. So what we should really be talking about is not black and white, right or wrong, but actually shades of grey. You know, things like uh, there's people. Yes, grammatically, according to the grammar book, it's incorrect. But the reality is, is most native speakers say that far more than they say uh, there are people. Uh, and there are a lot of other things, like thanks very much is technically grammatically incorrect. And then there are things that we purposely say in an ungrammatical way for emphasis. And the list goes on and on and on. Really, what you should be thinking about is not if something is grammatically correct or not, because it just really doesn't make sense. And also, just because something is grammatically correct doesn't mean it's natural. Could you aid me in this task? Sounds weird as hell, even though it's grammatical. But rather, you should be thinking about what we call native-like selection. Native speakers don't speak using grammar rules and in individual words. Rather, we speak using highly probable, highly frequent chunks of English, some of which, yes, are grammatical, some of them may not be grammatical. It's more common that they are, to be sure, but there are instances where they're not. And instead, you should be thinking about um, speaking in highly statistically or probable ways, saying things that native speakers say, i.e. learning in chunks, speaking in chunks of English. And until you start to do this, and until you start to let go of the need to be grammatically correct, you're always going to struggle to be fluent and natural in English, because it's simply not the way that we speak. Not only that, but if you're overly focused on correctness, you're always going to overthink think what you say, and that's going to really hold you back, it's going to slow you down, and it's going to make your English sound stilted and odd, even if you do end up speaking in perfectly grammatically correct English. Now the hard part of this, and where a lot of people are going to struggle, is that what this really means for you, if you've been trained in this way, taught in this way, and you've always tried to speak in perfectly grammatical sentences, and you're always thinking of what you're saying, and you're always trying to be, you know, to be perfect, and you're concerned about this, is you're going to have a period where you actually get worse. This is normal, it's natural, and it's actually a very, very good thing. And it's, it's something which actually came up recently in a course that I am currently taking. It's actually a cartooning course, I'm learning to draw cartoons. And Alison, the instructor, said that, you know, if you're doing things right, 
you're actually going to get worse before you get better and that's because we're now pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones and we're actually doing things in a slightly different way a way that we're not used to the brain is going to resist that because it doesn't like change it doesn't like to try to do things in a different way but if you're doing it in a different way that it's either going to you know be beneficial or in the case of speaking a language more efficient what you will find is you'll get worse for a period then you're actually going to get better and you're going to go way beyond the better that you originally had now the question is is how are you actually going to make this work for you what is it that you actually need to do to make this stuff happen well i can help you and i can help you to get started for free just head over to doingenglish.com slash free training and study my free rocket launch method training it's going to teach you the five key changes that you're going to have to make as an already fairly good okay speaker of english as a second language to go beyond that and get to the highest possible proficiency levels. With that, this is me, Julian Northbrook. I'm actually stood outside the National Pantheon here in Lisbon. I'm going to go and finish my walk, then get home, do some work. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.